breaking news and trending talk with Mike and McCarty. Mornings on 1017 FM and 710 Kiel. On the Jack Spring Electric Newsmaker Hotline, Shreveport City Councilman Grayson Butcher joining us. Good morning, Grayson. Hey, good morning, y'all. Thank you so much. We spoke with the mayor yesterday in response to your letter uh, asking for a declaration of emergency for SPD headquarters. The mayor told us, Grayson, that, well, it, it's it's not a bad idea, but it's not going to help in any way. What's your response to that? Well, you know, uh, I do believe that it will. It'll send a message to our police officers that we're, that we, you know, are on top of it and that we're willing to do whatever it takes to get them out of that building. Um, you know, so I, I do believe that it's necessary. I, I do think getting them out of the building is necessary as well. I heard the mayor said that, um, you know, that the mold was tested in 2022, um, you know, January of 2022. I, I just think that that's a long time ago. So you think there may be mold back or maybe mold there now? Well, I can tell you this, Aaron, uh, with what I do in my day job, I'm a, I'm a real estate appraiser and I'm an FHA appraiser. If I came to your house and your roof had been leaking for two or three years and there's something that looked like mold, I would contact a professional. And if you call me and say, hey, Grayson, look, I had this looked at in 2022. FHA is going to loan you any money on something that you had looked at in 2022, they want to see what it's like right now. Mm-hmm. So, you, you know, I mean, that to me, well, we had it looked at, it's not mold. Uh, I had a conversation with the mayor and, and he told me the same thing. And I shared my, my, my view on it with him that, you know, I think that it needs to be a current mold. And if it's not, that's fine. But we, there, there's no denying that the conditions at the police station, um, I wouldn't want to work there. I don't think the mayor would want to work there. I don't, you know, I, I think the conditions warrant getting them out there, get, getting them out of there. He well, says aren't the they, look, they're the, working on that, aren't, aren't they? No, not not that we know of. I mean, no, nobody's told us that they're working on it. They they just keep saying, "Well, we're looking for a spot to put them at some point." But I mean, come on, we've been we have been asking for this my, myself and other council members, uh, at least myself and Councilwoman Taylor have for four years in public safety committee meetings. Get them out of there. This has been going on forever. And there's no real plan of where to move them to. Um, you know, I, it, it took me a few phone calls on Tuesday to find, you know, a few places that we could move them. But that's that's not really what my job is. My job is to make sure that the money is allocated to be able to move them wherever they need to go. That's so, the question. He know, says the logistics of moving 400 plus people is cost prohibitive and i mean to, to, to just think of a detective interview room with the two-way mirrors you have to have and the camera systems and all that i mean it's a lot of stuff to move police officers and that would be cost prohibitive for the city is is one of the compl- the problems well i don't i don't know if it'd be cost prohibitive or not uh, we're, we're about to get brand new uh you know we, we allocated money for a new um, camera system for interviews. Uh, we've allocated that money. It's already there. Are we going to go and take that and put it in, in a, in a d- dilapidated police station? You know, I, I just, I don't think that, that dog hunts in my opinion. I really don't. I, I just think that there's something that's keeping them from moving them. And it, it may be cost prohibitive, but I mean, if they're in a building that is dangerous and we don't know that it's not, we know that there was a test done in 2022, but 2022 to you know, uh, January of 2022 to September of 2024, it's two years, over two years. What could happen in two years? You know. So what now, Grayson Butcher? Can the council declare a public emergency without the mayor? What's the power struggle here? Well, no, I think I think that we can we can pass a resolution encouraging him to do it, and then if if he chooses not to, then that's you know that that's going to be on the administration. I mean, I. I've done, I think, everything that the council can do. We, we've, um, you know, we've had conversations. We've sent the letter. We've been talking about it and talking about it. I, I'm not quite sure what else we can do. So you're right. I mean, I, I think that we're kind of at the end of the road. If the mayor says that, that he doesn't want to do it, then so be it. And he has to live with that, um, you know, down the road. I, I, I do think that we owe it to our police officers 
uh, to get them out of there and our citizens. And, you know, here's here's part of the thing that I told the mayor, and I'm not going to share our conversation, but I told him, I said, look, you know, we're getting bombarded. The council is with people calling us, police officers, their spouses, calling us and saying, please do something. Please help us. I mean, what would you do if you were a city councilman? Mm-hmm. I mean, you so, do exactly what we did. So, what would your what would your suggestion be to solve this problem? Well, where where were schools. you going to move them? What what would you do? Well, well, I think that there's office space in downtown Shreveport, like we discussed. Uh, you know, pretty much the entire Chase building is is vacant. It's got a parking garage. Um, you would be able to possibly move detectives and administrative staff and to to that building. Uh, I've talked to members of the school board. You have uh, Stoner Hill Elementary that's available. You have Newton Smith Elementary that's available. You have uh, Sunset Acres Elementary that's available. Uh, according to the member of the school board that I talked to, um, Stoner Hill has a brand new roof, brand new AC system, gym, classrooms, plenty of parking. Uh, and, you know, they would be willing to work uh, work a deal with us to get them in there on a temporary basis. So, you know, uh, and I brought that up to the mayor in our conversation, and he was like, oh, well, we didn't even think about that. I said, well, call them. Let's go over there and look at it. Mm-hmm. See if it's something that we feasibly could do. So, you know, start moving the, you know, take the worst part, take the worst part of the station, start migrating them out somewhere else. And I know I it can't happen, you know, overnight. I know that we can't say, okay, we're going to move them, and then by next Friday we're going to be up and running in business. I know it takes time. But think about the message. You know, if, you, if you've you been working at Kill, how long, Aaron? 40, 40 uh, years. 40 years. So if you had been telling your employer, the room that y'all are sitting in, I've been in there, 20 by or 10 by 10 room, it's full of mold, and you've been telling your employer for five years that I've got a mold issue. It's mildew. It's mold. It's stinky. I got raw sewage dripping on my desk. What level of confidence would you have in your employer if they didn't do anything about it? <laughs> now, if they told you, look, we're out looking for a new building, we're going to get you out of here, and we're going to give you a finite time of when you're going to get out of here, it would make it a little bit more, um, you could stomach it a little bit better, right? Yeah, At you bet. You bet. So, I, you know, we have no finite time. You know, we went and rode around. That's what, he, you know, me and the chief went and rode around and looked at some buildings. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, I mean, when is this going to take place? At least we could get the, you know, let's set a goal. Okay, by the, by the end of this quarter, we're going to have the detectives out of their spot. We're going to move the patrol division to here. Let's set some goals and some benchmarks. Let me ask and, you, you know, one more question. Um you and two other council members signed this letter. There's been some time mm-hmm. now. Have you talked to the other council members? How do they feel about it? Are they on board with you? I've talked to all but one, and yes, they are. And so they're going to urge the mayor to do the same thing? You expect the resolution may, may even pass unanimously? It's possible. Uh, I, I can't guarantee that, but I think it's possible. And even if that resolution does not pass, I do think that the consensus of the council, and, you know, I've told you, I've been on this show a hundred times. I've never, I always say I don't speak for other council members, but I will in this case. I can tell you that every council member is concerned and is, is hearing what the police department's saying. And it's time to act. I don't mean you got to, you got to have a U-Haul pulled up there today. I'm talking about let's get a time, let's find out where we're going to put them, and let's go. This excuse of, well, we don't have any place to move them, ride downtown and take a look. I mean, we're talking about this is Tuesday. I mean, we, we, we sent the letter on Monday. We're all the way to Friday, and we're arguing about it. It's just stupid. Mm-hmm. Grayson Butcher, City Councilman. Thank you, Grayson. Uh, and uh, yeah. we'll stay in touch and stay on top of this. We appreciate your yeah, efforts. Thanks. Thank you all. Y'all take care. You, you too. 1017 FM, 710 Keel, Mike and McCart. Let's get back to the show with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. All right. Monday. Yeah. How was your weekend? How was your weekend? I had a nice, good, relaxing weekend. How about you? Did you chill? You got some I chill did, time? I good. did chill, yeah. Good. I did I did chill. Dina was in Dallas. Uh, she got back yesterday. Uh, so, yeah. Kind of disappointed a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Uh, 
LSU. Eh. Okay, they yeah they they won. They they did make an adjustment and went seventeen zero in the second half. So that yeah. was that was encouraging. Big big second half, which was hap- made me yeah. happy. Didn't look good from start. Didn't look no. good out of the gate. Um, disappointing. And the Saints' offense uh, completely different than what I saw last weekend. That tells you how much Taysom Hill means to that team. I was texting with my buddies, and and he says, and, and one of them said, look, at, look when Taysom's out. Mm-hmm. Because he draws so much attention from the defense yeah. that it opens up a lot of other things. So many options wow. when he's available that yeah. you never know what to protect for. That's, and yes. now it's kind of one-dimensional, and you kind of know what they're going to do yeah. almost every play. Um, so dis- disappointing, and it, and I don't know where I got it. it. Was Atlanta? It was Philadelphia, and that you know, and that was the time the Cowboys were rooting for us because they hate Philadelphia. Right? They hate them. Right? Sure. And the Cowboys lost too, which was you know a disappointing weekend for all. I like them both. I like both teams. Yeah. I just I don't like it when they both lose. At least LSU got the win, and you know that was exciting. And I think we play South Alabama this week. We got one more cupcake. Yeah. And then it's, you know, grind. Then it's a grind. So we'll see how it goes. It, it was hot, though. All my friends oh that were in gosh. the stadium said it was like 97 degrees, the sun blazing down on them. Wait, for a at LSU? Game. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the sun yeah. was blazing down on them that afternoon game. That east side of the stadium, uh, I think it is. There was nobody there. It was so hot. With the hot. sun hitting it in the afternoon they like that. couldn't stand it. People were moving to, yeah. to get in the shade. It was miserable. I know they, they, uh, somebody texted me late and said there were so many medical calls. People aren't used to this heat being outside anymore. We just don't do it anymore. Okay. what What's the name of the college in Baton Rouge? LSU. What's wrong with you? LSU. LSU. No. LSU. LSU. Thank you. It's not LSU. Come on, it's LSU. <laughs> if I if I hear Joe Tessitore, oh. LSU, one we LSU, it's there's no H, LSU. Oh, stop it! No, it drove me <laughs> up. To, oh, and he doesn't do a bad job particularly, yeah. but did Aaron? It drove me up the. It's not LSU. Everybody says that, though. No, everybody doesn't say that. I'm a graduate. And if you're a I'll broadcaster. I, yeah, I know. LSU. LSU beat UCLA. Y- no, we beat well, UCLA. We beat say- UCLA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> UCLA. All right. Come on. LSU. <laughs> UBI. Now, when I slip and say LSU. <laughs> yeah. We all do it. You we have you have it. you have my permission to smack me or throw something at me. But hats off to the brave fans that stayed out in that heat because that was miserable. Yeah, hundred degrees it, it, felt it like one fifteen. Miserable. I like the purple jerseys. I do too. I like the purple jerseys, and I learned something at that game. Our shoulder stripes. I did not know that. UCLA. Who knew? <laughs> They stole it from UCLA. I never knew that. I'm sorry, UCLA. UCLA. <laughs> uh, well, can we go hunting with McCoy when we come oh back? Oh, my gosh. So much fun. Uh, yeah, Gary I, McCoy. Because the two of us are ignorant. <laughs> ignorant about hunting. Mike and McCarty, 101.7 FM, 710 Kia. More breaking news and trending talk with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. Gary McCoy educates two, uh, well, hunting morons, quite frankly. Coming up next, Mike and McCarty, 1017 FM, 710 Keel. Big stories of the day with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. One oh one seven one oh one seven FM seven ten keel Mike and McCarty. Okay, Gary. Gary McCoy 
Oh, wait, here, let me, he, uh, okay, now say something. Oh, are we live? There yeah, we are. We're live. We are live. The You're not allowed to poke me in the eyes. It's in my contract. You sit in this same little room with her every morning, and you yeah. have the restraint not to choke her till her <laughs> eyes bug out. I, I'm, st- no. Oh, I, yeah. I've worked. You're a no. saint, Mike Martindale. Yeah. He is a You're saint. You're a saint. <laughs> Crazy no. woman course, in the I've room. I've loved this woman for a long time, yeah. and I will tell you, there is okay. nobody better. Thank you. I that's sweet. See, yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. I'm still in that stage. Yeah, so. you're in awe of her. Yeah, uh, but you absolutely. Tolerate all that garbage. <laughs> <laughs> The king of the outdoors and anything to do with I don't know if I've fi- ever told you this story. Gary McCoy. Gary McCoy. Mm-hmm. Um, the last time I went deer hunting, yeah, I had uh, a, a Winchester 3030 mm-hmm. that was an antique. It was cl- Still classic. Still the deer killingest machine ever. Oh, I love them. Yeah. I got my, my grandfather's not too long ago yeah. and had it read. I, I redid all the wood. Oh, wow. Anyway, climbed up on the stand before daylight. Yeah. Okay. It's cold. Yeah. I'm up on the stand. Sun starts coming up. Rays started coming through the trees. It's oh, well, you beautiful. You got my trigger finger pulling right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting on the stand and then I hear. I'm like, what the hell? And the more light it gets. Yeah. You didn't notice that wasp nest under the deer stand, did you? A hornet's nest the size of a football. Yeah. And And I'm holding this 30-30 going, I can't toss it. (laughs) No. But I'm not. I jumped. I I jumped. I bet you did. (laughs) They'll help you. (laughs) I I have dumb questions. Okay, fire away. Uh, hunting and fishing season. There's yeah. no such thing as a fishing season, not right? Not here, not in Louisiana. Okay, we can fish whenever we want. Well, you know, unless you're down on the coast and you're snapper Okay, there's something. a limit. You do have to yeah. have a license, though, right? To hunt? To fish. fish. To fish? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to have a license. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. So yeah. you can't just go, I'm going out to cross lake? Now, if you're fishing in your pond, no. Well, right, right. right. You know, but okay. if you're on public water, yes, you got to have a license. Hunting. Yeah. Um, seasons for deer and squirrel and duck and okay, all we, that. We I, officially had the kickoff to hunting season here a couple of weeks ago. Okay. When dove season opened. Dove. Okay. Dove, dove season is always the first Saturday of September. Normally, that's on Memorial Day weekend, but it was kind of screwy this year because Memorial, I mean, uh, the first Saturday of September was a Sunday, or the first day of September was a Sunday. So dove season didn't actually begin until the 7th, okay. which was the following weekend. And then the weekend after that, we began teal season. Okay, I got to ask her. Teal season. Do, do That's you know, duck, do right? You know, now, see, you, <laughs> you, you joke killing. So- <laughs> oh, I'm don't, sorry. Don't oh. say that. I'm, I was going to say I'm baby, to keep baby up, deer, baby, oh, baby deal, yeah, baby. A, a teal. Teal a, is a duck? It's a duck. It's a small duck. And now, wait a minute, Gary McCoy. What? You can only shoot certain ducks at certain times? Well, of course. Now, you can shoot any one of them you want to if you and the game warden don't mind a little conversation. <laughs> How do you know well, now, from uh, 100 minute. yards I feel away bad. what kind know of duck that is? Know your prey before you pull the trigger. Are you serious? Yes, no, ma'am. Some prey ducks before are illegal one day and yes. others are illegal. Yes. yes. Holy. And you can tell? Yes. I wouldn't know a teal from hey, a we spiel. are that good. We're not just coffee-drinking camo-wearing <laughs> hairy-legged rednecks. We know our animals. But well, I'm here, sorry to kill your joke, by yeah. the way. Sorry. See, see, see. I know. Uh, around here, deer season is the biggie. Is that not right? Yeah, but, you know, we've got a bunch of things that are leading up. Like, this is the last weekend of teal season uh, until it reopens with normal duck season. So, Wait, the, let me ask you a stupid question. Okay. Do Another the, one? <laughs> do the, do you the, have more? Gary's do, never do, coming back in here well, again. No. You know do that. Do the teal know this is the last weekend? Uh, obviously. <laughs> they, I, let me tell you what. The guys I have talked to say it's the worst teal season ever. That there has never been so few birds is what we've had this year. So, you know, I'm they're thinking that they got the Dynasty. memo. You yeah. know, they, they Googled it. and <laughs> They're hiding out, yeah. binging Duck yeah. Dynasty right now. So what we we got the final weekend of teal season this weekend, and then archery season for area two, which is our area in northwest Louisiana, for for deer will open October one. Okay, that's bow and arrow. That's bow and arrow killing a deer with yeah. How October, hard is that? 
It depends, Aaron. I, I, I want you to think about this for just a sec. Now, you want to impress me, do bow season for ducks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, then I'll go damn yeah, straight. Yeah, damn yeah, skippy. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're 30 feet high, a north wind blowing at 40 yeah. miles an hour. You're 30 feet high, sitting on a little perch up there, just praying that it holds on to the tree because it's called a lock-on stand. Wind's blowing, like I say, really hard. It's like 12 degrees. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you know, this, this deer shows up out there, and you have a stick to throw at him. My question is, why? <laughs> what? Why, why are you sitting in a thing that might fall from the tree with a bow and arrow? Because <laughs> we... we uh, <laughs> Because you don't like your we wives? Are, we are real. Yeah. No, they don't like us. Okay, they kicked you out. My wife packs me up to send yes. me to there. It's, Aren't you going to the camp this weekend? It's funny you say that. Rich Scheidner had a, a stand. He's a stand up from like the 80s. And he had a thing on HBO and he said, men and women have to have activities they do separately. Yes. You got to have, you know, the wife has to have her thing. The guy, he goes, that's the only explanation I can come up with for but duck hunting. But a wife hunting. is not but sitting wait, in a wait, little wait. bucket next to a tree that might fall. You're killing my joke. Sorry, my bad. He says, that's the only reason I can come up with for duck hunting. He says, you're standing out three o'clock in the morning, waist deep, freezing water <laughs> going, well, at least she ain't here. <laughs> <laughs> so when's full-fledged deer season? I can shoot any deer I want. Okay, so if you are a kid, okay, okay. remember, archery season opens no uh, October 1. Okay. Re, re, it doesn't matter what day of the week that is. Okay, okay. so that okay. can be, okay. So then on the, let's see, um, two weeks before, so it would be the, 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 What's what's the the last Saturday of October? Twenty sixth, I believe. Twenty sixth. Yeah. So two weeks before that, October the twelfth. Twelfth, yeah. We would have youth season, and for that's deer. for kids seventeen and under for deer. Okay. And they can they can shoot them with anything. They can shoot them with a bow. They can shoot them with a shotgun, rifle, okay. whatever. Under can. seventeen and under. Seventeen. Okay. okay. Uh, and but they've got to they got to be with an adult who is licensed, and that's you know obvious safety reasons. Sure. Uh, but it gives them an opportunity to get out there. And then the weekend before regular season starts on October 19th okay. is primitive weapons season. Huh? And there are weapons that... Like flintlock? Yeah, kind of. But there are some modernized versions. Like the the, the weapon that I shoot is, is the forty five seventy, which is just a remake of one of the old style weapons. And... You really have to hate life to want to shoot it. I mean, <laughs> but will you be out there? Will yes. you go? Yes. Really? You know? Are I you out you every weekend? I wish you could all see this Gary's camo. Face. When else am I going to wear it? You know. So you literally will go hunt in deer season every weekend. You've known me for twenty five years. Have you ever seen me pass a weekend of deer season? I don't no. think I have. No. 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 And then on the twenty sixth, that's when it's everybody. That's when it's everybody. Okay. Yeah. Now listen. Then. Uh, I can't remember if it's the following weekend or the next weekend is when regular duck season starts. And that's How do you for the keep Wesley. up with all that? I, you know, do We're, you know the LSU schedule off the top of your head? Pretty close, okay, yeah. Okay, I, I, <laughs> That's you, okay. Yeah, there you go, Rich. Okay. All right. Yeah. We got to take a break. Oh, thank you for Sorry staying. For we appreciate that. So much. Tell the wife hello. I will do uh, that. Yeah, please. I will do that. Yeah. Oh. Love you guys. You're Y'all are the best. And fishing season's all year. Good to know. <laughs> Good to know. And uh, do roosters lay eggs, Gary? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Only during fishing season. <laughs> 1017 FM, 710 Q. Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. Da, da, da. 1017 FM, 710 Keel. Mike Woo-hoo. and McCarty. Woo-hoo. What? <laughs> excited about the LSU getting a win. That was nice. Who? LSU. Thank you. Oh, Joe Tessitore. <laughs> LSU. Oh, I, everybody First that down. was in, in the stands, I hats off to you if you were sitting in that sun. I had a, a buddy. He's got season tickets. He's there. You know, he was in Las Vegas. He went for opening, you know, oh, weekend. He, he yeah. was... And uh, yeah, it was hot. Mm-hmm, definitely. I, I haven't. I haven't talked to him. I don't know if he stayed the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Generally, we don't. Leave, you know, he does not leave. 
Right. I mean, good, bad, and the ugly. He's you know he's there till the till the end. People whether left. It's, yeah, people left that game on stretchers though because it was so heat, yeah. so hot. It was really hot. Um, congrats, still Texas is still a top ranked team in the nation. Is that Arch Manning's their QB? I didn't watch any of that. Yeah, they killed. Uh, they played ULM, I think, uh, which was not. I mean, I mean, you know, ULM got a nice check. That's good. Walk away with that one. But I, yeah, I did, is yeah. Arch Manning, you know, is he Peyton's son? No, that's Cooper's. Cooper's son. I believe it's Cooper's okay. son. But Archie, Man, Archie Manning's grand, grand, grandchild. Yeah, okay. it's his grandson. That's just cool to see an Arch, yeah, Arch that, Manning yes. playing football. Yes. Why not for LSU? Thank you. I know, uh, right? It's disappointing. Or, yeah, but Nussmeier, you know, he's not, not 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 bad. I know, I know. You're, you're right. You're absolutely right about that. But who's the backup if something happens to I him? I don't know. Who do we, we, who got, do we have in the wings? We got the number one prospect has committed to us. Yeah, but he's not like in 25. the house yet, is No, he's he? not here no. yet. I know we have another one, another freshman. Gosh, I, sh- I should know his name, but yeah, he's... Aaron, you know. two Heisman winners, though, in the past, what, four years, five years? I know, I know. That, that's... <laughs> and we hadn't had one since... Billy Cannon? I know, yeah. How long ago has that been? So. A long, long time. So, so pretty cool. Very, very exciting. Any news on this tropical system? Oh, it's big. Yeah. It's big. We got to catch up with Richard Llewellyn from the Weather Channel. This is going to be a monster. It looks like right now, east of us. It, I mean, I'm looking at our extended forecast, and it does not look bad. In fact, cooler temps. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But we'll get the we'll get the lowdown with Richard Lewelling from the Weather Channel coming up after the news. Top of the hour, Mike and McCarty, 1017 FM, seven ten Keel, and on that free Keel app. If you haven't downloaded it, be sure to do so. Let's see. One hundred one seven FM, seven ten Keel, Mike and McCarty, looking at this, looking at the Weather Channel, looking at this map, the future tropical storm Helene, mm-hmm. hurricane danger to Gulf Coast on the Jack Spring Electric Newsmaker Hotline. Uh, Richard Lowelling from the Weather Channel is joining us. Richard, good morning, sir. Good morning. How are y'all this morning? You're just sitting back with your feet up, sipping some coffee, watching uh, <laughs> Three Stooges, uh, aren't you, on cable? <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> you don't have anything going on. You guys live for this. Oh, oh this is yeah. This is the Super Bowl for us. Uh, there, there's no doubt and uh, no doubt about that. I mean, I've been doing this for you know 25 years, and each you know each one of these storms has you know, uh, the same drama, the same excitement, you know, in regards to it. Yeah, they're bad, but, you know, this is what meteorologists live to do. Now, I'm looking at the the latest models, and it looks like it's going way east of us uh, here. Here in the Arklatex, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, possibly even as far east as Florida landfall. Is that what you might be looking at? Yeah, we've got something, uh, a weather term that you don't hear very often in our part of the world. It's called the Fujiwara effect. And basically what's happening is, is this big bowling ball low that is sitting up over the central U.S. is going to drop into the Arklatex. And that's what's going to help to steer this system rapidly up toward the east coast of Florida or, or the west coast of Florida and the Big Bend and eventually bury the storm up in the Carolinas. In fact, this is going to be a fast-moving system once it really starts to take shape. This could be a major hurricane all the way up into parts of, you know, North Georgia, maybe even into the Carolinas because it's going to be moving so fast. Once it gets toward the uh, coast of Florida, you know, it could be moving 20, 25 miles per hour just due to the fact that this system is going to rapidly pick up speed and make its way toward the Big Bend and eventually kind of dig itself into Georgia and the Carolinas later this week. There's still some uncertainty on exactly where along the coast is this going to be. Is this going to be more of a Florida panhandle event, more of a Big Bend area of Florida or further south down toward Tampa? But I think the impacts are all going to be the same. It's going to be pretty bad regardless. Richard, how soon is it going to be? I understand tropical storm possible tomorrow, then hurricane possibly Wednesday? Is is 
Yeah, close. Yeah, believe it or not, yeah, they're going to start feeling the effects of this as early as tomorrow in the Florida Keys with you know heavy rain, squally weather, and tropical storm force conditions, and then of course all that moisture and all of the uh, in, in, influx of moisture in advance of the system is going to start to work on up through Florida and eventually get on up toward the Panhandle as we uh, move into uh, Wednesday and Thursday. And that's really a, a Thursday looks like it's going to be the big day, uh, maybe early Friday morning, where we will be dealing with the, uh, you know, the potential of a major hurricane making landfall somewhere uh, in Florida with this system. When you say major hurricane, are we talking a Cat 3, 4? Where, where, where do you think it's going to land? I think it's probably going to be, you know, stronger than a Category 3 at this point, you know, um, there's two different th uh, ideas about this. Uh, the European, which has been a bellwether model, has been basically talking about the fact, you know, it may get to a Category 1 hurricane, um, but, you know, I don't think that's going to be the case. I'm leaning toward the tropicals and the American model, which is showing a stronger hurricane. The, the Gulf of Mexico, the waters like bath water, 85 to 90 degree temperatures, nothing really to inhibit any type of, you know, uh, of slowing this thing down from developing. So I think it's going to be a, a stronger storm regardless, maybe three or a cat three or a cat four as it makes its way toward North Florida. Uh, talking with Richard Llewellyn with the Weather Channel. Richard, as the storm uh, gets closer and moves up into the Gulf, what will, what can we expect here in the Arklatanks? We really can't expect much of anything. Now, this upper level low that's dropping southward is going to be our saving grace. I think it's going to keep cooler temperatures on the forecast for us and mainly a dry forecast. There may be a shower or two in here on Wednesday and again at the end of the week as that upper level low just kind of sits over the top of us. But uh, temperatures are going to be nice, low to mid 80s for daytime highs, nighttime lows in the 60s. It's going to feel like, you know, what fall feels like in Shreveport. And uh, that's going to be the trend as we uh, move on, you know. <laughs> that's not saying week. much, is it? <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, you know, in low 80s and nighttime lows in the 60s, I wouldn't, you know, that's, I couldn't complain about that. I mean, this is going to be a nice trend of weather, and it's going to stick around all the way through the, at least the first five days of October. I think today is the last day in the 90s uh, for a good long while. In fact, we may be done with 90s for the season today. Now, Richard, we have our one of our biggest festivals of the year ever, the Red River Revel kicking off Saturday and running through the next weekend as well. Um, Fall-type weather, how much precip, if, if any? None, none. <laughs> 82, to 80, 82 to 86 for daytime highs, nighttime lows in the mid-60s. We'll see sunshine uh, throughout the uh, weekend coming up. It's going to be some, we're going to have a gorgeous weekend. You know, no impacts in the tropical system for us. Uh, and it looks like the ongoing drought concerns for uh, the Arklatex is going to continue because there's just really no signs of any big precipitation chances for us all the way out through the 10th of October. Well, that's great news. What about the humidity? Is that, are we, are we going to look at a little bit of lessening of that? Yeah, the humidity is going to come down too, and that's going to be due to the fact we're going to be dealing with some north and northwesterly breezes that will be coming in. So we're going to cut the Gulf of Mexico completely off. Uh, so it's just going to be a mainly dry forecast for us and uh, very comfortable temperatures in the forecast, too. Okay, summer over. We're now into fall. Uh, we, we, hit fall yeah. we hit fall this weekend. Do you think those summer temps are, are gone for, for good? I think, yeah. Uh -oh. I don't want to say, <laughs> I don't want to say, this is Shreveport now. <laughs> this is Shreveport we're talking about now. You know, uh, I think that, uh, you know, at least from what I'm seeing right now, we're done with the 90s. Um, 80s, yeah, we're going we're gonna to continue to have 80s, uh, probably all the way into the mid, mid, mid to late October. But I think we're done with the 90s. And we're definitely done with triple-digit heat, no doubt. Oh, that's awesome. So okay, I, I do have a quick question. Uh, I'm looking at our extended forecast, and next week looks for the Revel looks fantastic. It looks great. Yeah. The State First Fair of Louisiana, always, can you, can you put your, your future glasses on October 30th? It always seems to rain for at least 10 days of the fair. I tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll give you, I've got the Climate Prediction Center's outlook for one month, and that'll get us all the way through the end of October. And what I see is 
below average precipitation and temperatures running slightly above the averages for this time of the year, for that time of the year. You know, if I was a uh, looking into the crystal ball using that particular product, I'm thinking we're going to have a pretty decent forecast. Cross your fingers that we're done with tropical weather for us this season. Mm. I hope that's the case, but we can't say no to that. So, right. well, you know, we'll take it. It looks like a, it looks like a pretty positive forecast. I would say it's a pretty positive forecast at this point. I mean, that's a long way out, but. You know, I, I think that overall the trends are, are going to stay dry. I just don't really think that we're going to see much improvement in, you know, rainfall amounts or anything like that here as we move on through the rest of the year, the way things are looking right now. Well, I'm holding you to that. Amazing. Yeah, I think it's going to be a dry forecast. <laughs> if it rains during the fair, I'm going to go, well, Richard said it wasn't going to rain. <laughs> not yeah. quite. Not I mean, quite. yeah, well, I know we'll talk between now and then, but oh, you yeah. can just continue to remind me about that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Richard. We will. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. We know you're busy. Get back on that storm. Thank you. We sure will. Y'all have y'all stay safe and have a good week. Uh-huh. You too. 1017 FM 710 Keo Mike and McCarty. Let's get back to the show with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. One seven FM seven ten Keel Mike and McCarty. I came, <laughs> I came across that made me laugh, and honestly, honestly, made me think of you. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Couple in the car. It was one of these reels. Mm-hmm. Couple in the car. The lady, the girl was driving, and the guy. Now, why they're filming this, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Why? Do you just walk around filming everything? No. Thank you. No, but I'm I, not under 35. Well, that's true, too. <laughs> and I do take an inordinate amount of pictures of my food more than I ever thought I would. No. Because, only because, like, I'll send it to my daughter. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, because she makes these incredible meals and I have a hot dog on a paper plate. Um. <laughs> How did we grow up without taking pictures of our food and sending it to each other? How did we survive that? So the couple's in the car, and 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 the guy goes, okay, now wait, go up here, turn left, turn left at the, at the stop sign. Oh. Aaron, she stops, and she puts her hands in front of her with the thumb out and the, four, and the forefinger up on both hands and has to look at her hands and go, oh, there's the L. On the left wow. hand. Wow. <laughs> wow. He goes, wait, what? What? <laughs> he goes, do you, you not know your left from your right? And you thought of me? <laughs> I did. I know left from me, right. It made me laugh. <laughs> and I thought, I can see Aaron doing that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But your Bentley probably has a feature yeah, that, absolutely. that tells you left or you right. You just talk to it. You just say, signal left. Turn and left here. Turn left here. And it'll okay. turn the signal on and we're good. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. But I, I was like, do you have, so you don't have issues between between left and right then? No, and I'm really good at maps. I'm really good at north, south, east, and west. Um, a lot of people aren't. I get that. Right. They're directionally challenged. Um but I did make a screw up a week, a couple of weeks ago, coming out of t- Texarkana. I made a wrong turn and was headed to Dallas. Oh, you're on like 30 or something? I don't know. I was taking one of those loops, I guess, and I okay. must have gone the wrong way on the okay, loop. Okay, well, okay. That's understandable. And I wasn't paying attention because I was drinking wine and texting. and Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You had it on autopilot. Yeah, I had it on autopilot. Right. And then I look up and it's like, um, whatever it was to, to Tyler or something. I'm like, what? Where am I going? <laughs> 10 miles from Tyler. So it was an hour and a half. I'd been driving 20 minutes and then I had another hour and a half to go to get back home. So yeah, sometimes when I'm not paying attention and I think I know what I'm doing, 
I screw up. But for the most part, yeah, left and right's good. But look at, okay, anybody again, anybody like you were talking about under 30 has never had to unfold and read a map. Oh, gosh, yeah. Has never had to basically remember phone numbers. I mean, True. think about it. True. If, if I had to call my mom right now and I didn't have my phone, yeah. couldn't do it. I mean, I have no idea what her number is. I, right. I think I'm pretty sure it's three one eight. I yeah. couldn't call. I can call. I could call Dina. You know, I could call my daughter or my son. I think I could call my sister. And Aaron, that's it. I couldn't call you. No, I'm the same. I couldn't tell you what your number is because you pull up your phone and you go, you know, mom, boom, call. Just tell Siri, call Martindale. I don't, I don't even do that. It's a, yeah, it's simple. Yeah. Well, how many numbers do we? And the thing is, I like I remember my childhood number. I rem yes, yes. I could tell you my girlfriend's number from high school. I remember the front desk number here. <laughs> I from bet I years yeah, ago. You, I dialed it seven thousand times. Right, exactly. My I, uh, my grandmother's number, which by the way is still active because my aunt lives. It was her. Yeah, it was her mom. My aunt still lives in that house in Shady Grove. Oh, I can tell man. you that number. So wow. first, I'm not going to say it out loud. Holy but. cow. <laughs> but, but can I remember, you know, what I had for lunch yesterday? No. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> incredible. But I do know my left from right. I do know my left okay. from right. North, okay. south, east, west. I got that. Roosters and eggs? <laughs> I don't got that. Stop laughing. Oh. Oh, Kent Rogers with the Northwest Louisiana Council on Governments. The I-49 inner city connector back in the front hot burner. Oh, how Talking about that coming up at about 740. Mike and McCarty, 101.7 FM, 710 Keel, and on the free Keel app. Um. Breaking news and trending talk with Mike and McCarty on 101.7 FM and 710 Keel. Well, the I-49 connector is back in the news. We're going to talk with Kent Rogers from the North Louisiana Council on Government. Uh, he addressed the the hearing on Friday. We'll hear what he has to say coming up next. 101.7 FM, 710keel.com. Back with more party on 101.7 FM and 710 Keel. On the Jack Spring Electric Newsmaker Hotline, Kent Rogers, North Louisiana Council on Government. Kent, good morning, sir. Thanks for taking time to talk with us this morning. Good morning. How are y'all today? Well, we're doing well. You gave an update to the uh, Transportation Committee. They held a hearing. Uh, tell us what's your update. Tell, what did you tell them? Well, the, the biggest part of it was that there was a cultural resource survey that had to have been done uh, basically on all the alternatives, but an update to that based on the uh, alternative, what was called alternative 3A. Um, that's the alternative, the build-through alternative that cuts north of the power plant rather than south of the power plant. Um, all that was submitted to DOTD and Federal Highways. They concurred with it and sent it on to SHPO uh, two weeks ago. Um, Part of that report includes uh, over 500 uh, standing structure inventory firm forms. Um, each of those forms is around five pages long, so you can imagine how thick and big that thing is mm -hmm. to uh, review and go over. Um, but then just gave them an update of where we are on the project, on the process. Um, we should have a the draft alternatives chapter of the EIS submitted uh, within the fourth quarter of this year. That keeps us on track with the schedule um, that the department presented uh, in June. What are, what are the hurdles still ahead, as simple as you can make it? The NEPA process in general. What is that? Explain um, that. The National Environmental Protection Act. Anytime you take a dollar in federal funds, you have to follow uh, the NEPA process and do evaluation of, of cultural, historic, uh, wetlands, floodplains. Uh, you name it, you have to evaluate it and look at it. And you have to compare all the different alternatives together equally um, 
for all those different variables. Are we close to the end of that? I mean, it's been 16 years. Yeah, I, yes. We see light at the end of the tunnel, um, as I told them. Um, once SHPO concurs with that, um, with that report, um, we can finalize a few things and submit them to federal highways and get a preferred alignment out of that. Um, and then just the rest of it is a very procedural process that would begin uh, roughly the second quarter of next year. It has to go to federal highways for their legal sufficiency review. It has to go to their civil rights division, um, several other divisions there. Um, they have various different time frames to review them. Um, once they review it and concur with it, then we can put it on the street for public comment. Um, Again, has to be on. Uh, well, this is for what the, the the formal final public hearing. Okay. On the document, Kent Rogers um, with the North Louisiana Council on Government. Kent, we, there's been a contingent in town that's been opposed to this uh, building through particular areas of town. Uh, where are we on that? How do you address that? Correct. Well, that's what all this work has been, is to address all the different alternatives and present all of the impacts and benefits to each of them um, so that Federal Highways can make a, uh, a an informed decision on that preferred alternative. A boulevard that they've talked about, the Allendale Strong, making that a boulevard through Allendale, that's not, that's not what the federal government would approve, correct? That's not what is being studied in this process. Part of the one of the very first things that you have to do is with federal highways get concurrence on what the purpose and need is. And the purpose and need described in this document is a interstate grade highway, not a boulevard. Will um, it be an elevated highway through Allendale? Is that the it, plan? It, it, if it's if the build through is the alternative, it's all elevated um, from where it where it runs into 20 now all the way up to 220. Um, the intent is, with the build through alternatives is that it would be higher than normal and the spans would be longer than normal. That that keeps it more open. Um, keeps uh, the ability to cut underneath and through and whatnot better um raises it up higher so that it's not you know not as obtrusive um it will not be a giant wall like built through town it, it'll be all on pilings and pier beam type thing kind of like so a three mile uh, bridge uh yeah that i mean Similar to that, I mean, it'll be elevated and and elevated a little bit higher than normal. Mm -hmm. So, um, so uh, and it can with, spans longer than normal. With it being higher and longer, does that mean it's going to cost more? And what about funding? Are we are we good with funding? Where is that coming from? No, it, it, that wouldn't cost any that much more to do it. And part of what we're doing along with that is what they call context sensitive um, and community. Um, design so taking into consideration things that that help help to blend it into the environment and into the neighborhood and into the area um, in terms of funding from the state side we have three different dedicated funding sources um, of course the we have some funding left from the um, unclaimed properties act that was the one that was originally developed um, to get construction from 220 the Arkansas border done. We have uh, 100 million coming from the BP oil spill um, settlement for that project, for that fund. And then also the, a couple of years ago, they passed the, um, it's the automotive sales and use tax, basically tax on cars, tax on uh, rental vehicles and whatnot. A portion of that goes into the transportation trust fund at the state level, and a portion of that that gets moved over gets divided among 
uh, it's either four or five state mega projects. And of that, roughly this year, I think uh, 49 North received somewhere in the 32 to 70, 37 million dollar range. Um, henceforth, it's anticipated somewhere between 40 and 42 million a year in perpetuity. Now, this is a billion dollar project, though, so the feds are going to fund the bulk of Correct. it. Correct. We would go after federal funding for it, yes. Mm -hmm. And we would go after that as much as possible and as much as we can. Um, but one thing I reminded the committee the other day was that uh, 220 of the Arkansas border was roughly 65, 35, 65 being state funds. Would, would there be an exit at Caddo or Ford Street or whatever we're going to call that exit? Is that the, the one exit on this 3.5-mile yeah. stretch? The build through alternative would actually have uh, two internal exits, one at Caddo Ford and one at Hearn. Kent Rogers with NL Cog. So, with all the studies and all the federal funding getting in line, when do you, when do you expect us to start turning dirt? Uh, we should have a rod again uh, in uh, well in 2026. At that point. Uh, the department could make some determinations of how they're going to let that project. It all depends on how they do that. Um, we are encouraging them to use more of the design build method, uh, similar to what they did on the gate access road, what they've done with Jimmy Davis. Um, it cuts down. What that does is you let the engineering and construction contracts all at the same time. Um, that cuts out, you know, Normal process is you'd let an engineering contract, and at the end of that, then you'd go out for a right-of-way contract, and then you go out for utilities, and then you go out for construction. And in each one of those phases, you know, that's, you know, anywhere from eight months to a year in that, you know, letting and contract selection and negotiating and getting people under contract. So when you do the design build, it cuts several iterations of that advertising and selecting and contract no negotiation out the window. And how um, long is the build? So how, how long is the build for this? Uh, time frame to get it constructed? Yes, sir. Uh, once they begin, I, I, I would say three, five years, maybe. Okay. Uh, I, 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 you know, that all depends again on how that contract gets let and how aggressive, you know, the contractors in the state are in getting it done. Well, I, I didn't think we'd see it in our lifetime, quite frankly. Well, we so might, huh? We might. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it, if all goes well and all the stars align and everything, that, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we would see it. Kent Rogers, North Louisiana Council and Government. Thanks for your time, sir. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Anytime. 101.7 FM, 710 Keel. A uh, great story coming up after the news top of the hour. This is fantastic. Wow. Terry Netterville, of course, uh, one of the uh, uh, mamas mm -hmm. on American Ground Radio. Wait till you hear this amazing story. That will do. I'm Nicole Murray with Your Money Now. Unicredit announced it had increased its stake in German lender Commerce Bank to around 21% and has submitted a request to boost that holding to up to nearly 30%. The Italian bank acquired the additional Commerce Bank shares through financial instruments. Boeing has announced Ted Colbert, the president and chief executive officer of Boeing Defense, Space and Security, will be leaving the company. Steve Parker will oversee BDS until a permanent replacement is found. Global chip giants Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing and Samsung Electronics have been in talks with the United Arab Emirates to explore building mega factories in the Middle East. That was reported on by the Wall Street Journal. Under the initial terms discussed in the meetings, they would be largely funded by the UAE. Futures are slightly higher after the Dow reached a new record high on Friday. On Friday, the Dow Industrials gained 38. That's your money now. Mom, meet Sarah. From first-time Nana moments. Yeah, welcome to Flight 101. To annual girls' trip moments. 
Your can't miss moments are worth protecting against RSV. If you're 75 or older or 60 plus with a chronic condition like asthma, COPD, heart disease, or severe diabetes, you're at higher risk of landing in the hospital from RSV. And there are no prescription RSV treatments. Check eligibility and schedule your RSV vaccine at VaxAssist.com. So where should we go next? Sponsored by Pfizer. Everyone on the road is trying to make it to their destination safely. You can help by staying aware of the large trucks and buses around you. They take longer to stop, have large blind spots, and make wide turns that require caution from other drivers. It takes all of us working together to share the road safely. Learn more at www.sharetheroadsafely.gov. Paid for by FMCSA. Let's get back to the show with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Kiel. I shocked you this morning, didn't I? Aaron, that, that, that blew my mind. And I know where you're going. That mm-hmm. blew my mind when you said that this morning. The, the- Red River Revel. Open Saturday. This weekend. Yes. The Revel. Yes. It's already here. It's time for the Revel. We're almost into October. Oh unbelievable. My gosh, it is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And you know, the weather's changing just in time. Oh. And, you know, it, for all the Revel people, the, the Richard Llewellyn from the Weather Channel just told us you guys have the best weather. All week next for the week. week. Looks it looks gorgeous. Incredible. Yes. And I mean, they have, they're doing all kind of special events. They're going to do a, what is it? A day of the dead, uh, some sort of, some sort of really cool event, um, celebrating our Hispanic heritage. Okay. They're doing uh, Jefferson Starship's going to be here. There are so many musical acts. And then of course the Starship's coming Jefferson Starship. Mm -hmm. How many original members are left? I don't think there are any. I, I don't think. I may be wrong, but I'm... Is Grace Slick still alive? I don't know if she's still alive. She's not in the in the group. No, okay. but, that, you know, just still. an iconic no group. No kidding. You know, just, it's going to be a fabulous... And it's it's free until 5 during the weekdays, and then after that and on the weekends, it's 5 bucks. Saturday, high mm-hmm. of 81. Wow. Sunday, 85. Next week, you're looking at mid to low 80s. All next week. For the highs. Sunny. Sunny. Four <gasps> percent chance of rain, eight percent chance of rain. The Revel people are just rubbing their hands together. This is going to be Richard told us even the humidity is going to be lower. Yes. Well, yes. He says we're basically pushing the gulf out of our forecast I know. for next week. It is gonna be an uh, incredible. I gotta just got a text. There are actually two original members still in Jefferson Starship. Well, there you go. Wow. How fun. Who knew? That's going to be incredible. Revel this weekend. What do you eat at the Revel? What is your go-to? Well, it used to be the pizza letta and, um, yeah. you know, the I'd, I'd always get catfish. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all good. Those pizza lettas, because my kids went to St. Joe's, so that was their chair, that was their item. And when they didn't sell them out, they'd sell them at the school. You could get a whole one for cheap. It was, oh, it was awesome. So I miss those two big time. You don't want to miss the story coming up after the Ooh. local news. One of our American mamas, Terry Netterville, going to be joining us. 1017 FM. Get seven a tissue out. 710 Kio. One oh one seven FM seven ten keel. I don't know if I can stomach this one. Oh the, no, this is going to be uh, good. Uh. We're on the Jack Spring Electric Newsmaker Hotline. One of the American Mamas from American Ground Radio, Terry Netterville, joining us. Terry, good morning. Good morning. How are y'all? Well, we're doing well. How are you after a big weekend? Exhilarated. You thought I was going to say exhausted. I'm exhilarated. I'm still on a high. <laughs> your your summer got married this weekend. Your your daughter, yes. your only daughter. Yes, but yes, she got married. Your story on Facebook with regard to your mother and your father. 
I'm going to let you tell it because we all want to connect with somebody who's no longer with us. And holy oh. cow, did y'all do it. Tell us what happened. Oh, Aaron, it was incredible. So we were, you know, we had all 14 bridesmaids here and we were trying to find a place to take a picture for the brides, bridesmaids in summer. We couldn't find one inside. So the photographer said, let's go outside. And I have a tree that we planted for my father after he died 17 years ago. And I said, let's just go over here by the tree. So my sisters and I looked at each other and smiled. And we thought, well, that's priceless to us. Mm -hmm. So we get over there and you have to understand that my mom died suddenly uh, a few months ago. And we were there with her the last week that on earth. And we were saying, sitting around her bed, talking to her the couple of days before she died. And she said, I'm telling you for right now, listen to me when I say this. I'm going to do a much better job than dad did at letting y'all know that it is me when I give you signs. And we laughed because we, <laughs> we wanted more signs from dad. Sure. She said, it is going to be not the, you know, family numbers on the clock. It's going to be, you're going to know, I promise you, and I'm bring dad along for the ride. And when I get to heaven, I'm going to get on to him for not making it very clear. So, you know, we, we were so excited. We were like, you drew comfort from it. Well, we haven't received that many yet, you know, just we, the numbers on the clock. But when we were out there by the tree, all of the sudden, you know, we're watching them. And Summer, who has been missing her grandmother fiercely, um, all of a sudden she looks up and these two huge butterflies came right. And they did this like twirly, whirly little dance in front of her face. Oh. And all of the bridesmaids looked and we were all like, because oh, they were swirling around her. And we were, you know, my sisters and I were, at first, we were just kind of looking at each other. And then, you know, Summer watched them, and they stayed close to the tree by the batting cage for the entire session of getting this picture. And this so is during a photography like, session, so the photographer yes. was there. Yes, yes, yes. <sighs> so, but it was my sister who captured it, you know, because he was getting them ready. And my sister was videotaping that whole process. And we all, when the butterflies came, it was just so, it was so different from any other time that a butterfly just flies in front of you. It was two of them, and they were staying right in front of her, enough to where all of the bridesmaids eventually looked over and were going, what is happening right now? And we knew. You know, our mom said, you'll know, you'll have no doubt. You won't have to think it's a coincidence. I am telling you, when we show up, you're going to know and you're going to feel it and just know it's us. We knew it. We felt it. I'm getting emotional right now because I'm, it was different from any other side. I'm about to cry. Are y'all <laughs> bawling? Are you and your sisters oh bawling? We cried our fresh makeup faces off. We were we huddled up. You know, we got we gathered around. We all we we all knew it was going on, but my sisters and I especially knew. So we all looked at each other and we so we were looking at the phone to see if Lindsay captured it. And when we realized that she did, we huddled up. And we just were crying and, and laughing and thanking mom. And Summer was like, she's here. She promised she's here. Oh. Oh. And so we all just felt, it was so interesting, y'all, because it really, it, it set the tone for the rest of the day. And we were just all euphoric because we knew for sure that they were with us. And sometimes you wonder, you know, the veil between us and them is so sheer. And when you do feel that tangible tap of the heart and go, oh, that was them. I feel them or I smell them or whatever. That one was so real. I don't think I've ever had anything happen that just solidified the fact of, of God's promises that love is stronger than death. They are with us. We will be with them again one day. And these are the glimpses of God and a glimpse of heaven that just, I don't know, it just makes you go forth with hope and joy, and it's contagious. I've had so many people reach out and say that they have felt so moved because they we crave that. In a world today when things seem kind of unsteady, we crave a steadiness like that oh. that is filled with hope. Well, you've got and these pictures posted on your on your Facebook that are just oh. fascinating. And Terry, oh. we're talking with Terry yeah. Nettaville, one of the American Mamas uh, on American Ground Radio. When, when my mother-in-law... Uh, she loved butterflies. Yes. And yes. and my daughter, Mrs. You're going to make me get all emotional. Uh -huh. And there have been experiences with butterflies. It's just 
fascinating. Yeah. I mean, we've experienced this very thing, uh, you know, with Nana, and it means a lot to my daughter. So I know exactly oh. what this you means to you. You draw comfort, don't you? Yes. It's just, you draw comfort from it. And, and it lets, and I told my kids the same thing. I said, if something ever happens to me, I'm telling you. I will. I'll be right there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as, hel- as a helicopter mom, you think I am now, <laughs> and I'm able to be there for y'all. Uh, but mom made that. You know, she. It was so interesting because at the end, it's hard because we. You know, as that week came to a close and she was getting weaker, it was the one day that the four of us, her four babies, my two sisters, my brother and I, were sitting around her holding her hands, talking about memories, the things that you do, mm-hmm. and she just. In that moment of clarity, she said, I want y'all to listen to me. And it was so, her, she was so convicted by what she was saying that we, we, we just drew such comfort. And then we laughed about, um, you know, her saying, he's going to get in trouble. I told him I need clearer signs from you. <laughs> so when she, when she was serious in that moment, I thought, wow, what a beautiful thing to say to us. Not yeah. really imagining what it would really feel like in real time when it happens. And when it did happen yesterday, it was um, you had a taste. You had a taste of heaven. You felt. You feel. You feel closer. It's almost uh, the only word I can say. It's an ethereal experience, mm. and because we all felt it, she said, "You will feel it, and you will know it. You won't be going oh a feather on the road." Ter- you, it's not like that. Yeah. Oh, you got to go. No, yeah. I wanted to ask you. Oh. How did you not want to grab those butterflies <laughs> and keep them forever? <laughs> right. <laughs> Exactly. You know, <laughs> it's such a great question because I should have thought clearer. But what was incredible is usually around here, we live out kind of in the country. So they don't just stay around. I mean, they do. They fly, you know, these, I've never seen butterflies like that ever. That's what we were talking about as well. But we have the tree is by my boy's batting cage. And that was purposeful because the boys wanted to feel like that he was right there when they were practicing. So for them to stay, and, st- and they twirled around each other. It's not like they w- went separate ways. They stayed together. Oh. And it was like I could almost <laughs> picture my dad going, they're loving this, Barbara. Oh. They are loving this. Just cut- what a wonderful story. Oh. That's incredible. <laughs> Thank you for letting me share it, you guys. Oh. Thank you. It's incredible. And, and congratulations to Summer. I know y'all had a Thank spectacular you. weekend. And, it, and the pictures are beautiful. I can't wait to see all the wedding photos. Oh, my gosh. I I can't wait to share. She married the greatest guy in the world. What, he was he was the boys' teammate at Louisiana Tech on the yeah. baseball team. Oh. And I actually, another story, this is another God thing, and we'll talk about it another day. I chose him. I called it three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. If they would just listen to their mama, yeah. everything would be good. I called it from well, day one. Well, I give that grandbaby it. a big smooch for me today. I know you got I your will. hands on him. Yes, I do. We got him this morning. I can't wait to give him an extra hug for you. Thank you, Terry. Of course. Bye, guys. Thank you, Terry Netterville, one of the American Mamas on American Ground Radio. Mike and McCarty, 101.7FM710Keel.com. No more breaking news and trending talk with Mike and McCarty on 101.7FM and 710 Keel. All right, let's see. They don't want you to use a gas stove anymore. Uh-uh. They want you. They don't want you to have a a, a, a combustion powered engine uh, for your automobile. Yeah, but they want you to drive electric vehicles. Mm-hmm. They want you to have an all electric stove, all electric water heater, lawnmower. But yet they have a power grid that can't support what they have already. You bring up California. something I want. I want. I want someone to ask Harris that. Do you support? Oh, she's not going to answer any questions. Do you support banning she wants gas? To turn the page and move but forward. But that's her state. And look to the future. All she, this. Trite I need to hear her crap. say if we should outlaw gas-powered cars. Oh, she's going to be against that now, Aaron. You're 38 days away from an election. Is she against gas-powered lawnmowers? Why aren't we why aren't we asking her that? This is your state. This is what's been passed in your state. And now no more plastic bags of any kind in California. They're banned. Banned beginning in 2026. Vice President Harris, do you support banning plastic bags? 
Do you think it's a necessity nationwide? But see, Erin, I don't believe a word she says. There's video of her going, oh, I will absolutely ban fracking. Day one. Not anymore, Mike. Exactly. Now. She supports fracking now. <laughs> Fracking's the greatest thing ever. Yes. Yeah. But, so, that, but that's what's happening in California. That's her Governor state. Newsom signed the law, signed mm-hmm. the bill, banning plastic. Now, it said it's the thicker plastic bags, but the thinner ones were already banned. Yeah, they are already banned. And some cities like San Francisco had already banned them in 07. I mean, they've been outlawed in San Francisco. Isn't that where she's from? Yes. That, that, they've been banned there right, for a long time. Right. But we we say this all the time. What happens in California spreads around the country five to ten years later like here it comes venereal disease uh, <laughs> now there are 12 other states that ban plastic bags nothing in the south yet um but is it is the clock ticking and i mean it's a simple issue but banning gas-powered lawnmowers Banning gas-powered cars. I have a th- I have a thing in my house, a little box. I say little. I don't know. It's about a foot foot tall, you know, six inches wide. Mm-hmm. Has a hole in the top and a slit down the front. It's a metal box. Okay. Full of plastic bags. We yep. don't just throw them away. No, I don't either. When I get them home, <laughs> we also have a, a shelf in the cabinet with more of them in there. Mm-hmm. We use them. Yep. We use them over and sometimes over again. Right. Before before eventually tossing them. Mm, they're harming the environment, Mike. I I the thin ones, you know, and I'm, now look, I, I, I'm not saying I'm just all for trashing the planet, but I think we have an overinflated estimated value of ourselves. Right. By saying we're going to destroy the earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, no, we ain't. I know. I know. It's the earth just... is going to be just fine. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen, if you travel down, just an example, travel down Fairfield. There used to be a huge apartment complex. One of the big buildings right on the front of Fairfield next to Normandy Village. The, the, that huge building burned. Okay. Okay. Well, it's a grass field right now. It's mm. a big grassy area. I, the, the earth is going to be just fine. Right. <laughs> I know. You can't even tell there was a building there. I know. I don't understand it. I just worry that it's coming here one day, all the wacky laws they pass. Well, and, and you're exactly right. Mm. The land of fruit and nuts. You know, it, yeah. it, it it has a tendency to move east. It does. It happens. That's for sure. <laughs> mm. Coming up uh, just after the news. Uh, Tim Magner, the Chamber of Commerce. We're going to talk about the I-49 inner city connector. Big hearing on that. Um, it sounds like we're making headway. We'll see. Mike and McCarty, 1017 FM, 710 Keel, and on the free Keel app. Back to the big stories of the day with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710. Okay, real, 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 real quick. Mm-hmm. You watched the, the F1 race yesterday. Yes, I did. Lando Norris. Mm-hmm. Big fan. Do you think Daniel Ricciardo is going to be back? Ooh. Or do you think that was it for him for I, F1? I think he's done. I think he's you done. You think he's done. I hate that, but I think he's I done. I hate that too, sort mm-hmm. of, kind of. Yeah. I, I, I wonder if he rused the day he left Red Bull. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He and Max were not getting along. Mm-mm, okay, I'm just no. curious. Yeah. Just curious if he thought he'd be back. I don't think so. Don't think so. I-49 Connector back in the news. Tim Magner with the Shreveport Chamber of Commerce is going to talk with this coming up just after the break. 1017 FM, 710 Keel, Mike and McCarty. Back with more of Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. And on the Jack Spring Electric Newsmaker Hotline, Shreveport Chamber of Commerce, Tim Magner joining us. Tim, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am I threw him for a loop when I answered the phone. He said I was hoping to talk to the, would you call him the Rubinator? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He'll be back on Wed- Wednesday. Um. Excellent. He you, gets a few days off. You testified before the Transportation Committee 
uh, big topic was the I-49 inner city connector. It looked to me like from hearing that, that we are getting darn close. Am I wrong? Well, uh, we, we have it. We have reached another milestone, which is uh, in the process, which I think is an important thing to, to point out. The cultural study that, um, you know, takes into account all of the, um, you know, buildings and potential issues um, has been signed off on by uh, DOTD and Federal Highways. They've begun doing these reviews in um, in parallel rather than in series. So that's been helpful. So that now uh, is at the SHPO office. They have 30 days or had 30 days from, um, I think, the, the, a couple of weeks ago to sign off on that. Once that is done, then the draft EIS is ready to go. Um, and so then that that's another hearing and then and then we're moving forward. But what I think is um, was most uh, helpful is that a we we had a, an opportunity to talk about this in front of the transportation committee. Representative Phelps um, was instrumental in getting um, when the speaker was up here when Speaker de Villiers was up here. We had a meeting with him about it. She was instrumental in getting uh, it on the agenda for the transportation committee. The secretary was there. Um, uh, Kent Rogers was there. And I think there's there's definitely some um, some attention that's being paid now uh, in Baton Rouge. Uh, the transportation committee is on record and now um, asking about this. And so so I think I think that's those are all very positive developments. The opposition from Allendale Strong and some in the neighborhood. Um, how I only I only saw one person show up, but I guess they presented written testimony. I, I believe there was a letter that was submitted. Yeah. Are there concerns? Have they been addressed? Uh, are we beyond the opposition now? Do you do you think? Well, I, I mean, unfortunately, my sense is that the the folks in, in Allendale Strong are are opposed to any highways anywhere, um, and so this is. So I don't know um, it, what their specific position is. I do know that Route 3A, um, you know, which was designed in in part to circumvent the entire um, Allendale neighborhood, I think was designed as a way to to provide a way forward for that. Um, they continue to be. Um, you know, at least as they as they mentioned in their testimony, um, against the um, the um, the the road itself. Um, so, you know, I, I think I think a lot is being done to to address their concerns. Certainly, the cultural study, you know, is designed to to evaluate you know if there are historic structures or other things like that that need to be taken into account. Well, you mentioned that they're opposed to any highway. Um, one of the representatives, I remember it's, it's been a year ago, told us on this program that interstates through towns kill the towns. Uh, they were opposed to I-49 coming through Shreveport just in general. Uh, apparently I-20 is not good in Shreveport. Uh, do, you, do you think an interstate through a town kills a town? No, I, I mean, I think if you look at the interstate, uh, you look at the development, even just saying, I mean, we, we, we've had I-49 South for a while, but if you look at what's happening in I-49 North, where's the development happening? It's happening in, you know, up, up near in Belcher. It's happening in Dixie. It's, there, there's, there are new developments that are happening right along the roadway. North Shreveport. Um, yeah, it does bring it does bring economic development, and I think when you look at the challenge that our inner city has, when you look at the challenge that places like Allendale have, having interchanges at Fort Street and at Hearn will um, you know will spur development in those areas, the and that will encourage people to to move back in or to develop new business opportunities in those areas. Dr. Tim Magner the with happen. the Shreveport Chamber of Commerce, I'm going to hope you can do this for me. I'm going to kind of close my eyes, and you take me on the route of 3A. I'm on I-49 North. I'm headed toward Allendale. Where does 3A go? So so 3A basically goes, there's a, between um, Allen Avenue and Pete Harris. Okay. Okay, there's, there's, there's a block there, basically. So what it does is it, is it starts um, immediately across I-20. It sort of moves um a little to the, let me get this right, a little to the um, east of Pete Harris, goes up that, along that roadway there. Then it flares out um, toward the, um, 
uh, toward the uh, Waterworks Museum, kind of loops around uh, by where the um, uh, the uh, uh, tra- um, scrapyard is, and then comes back across over the top or around by the the Swepco plant, and then essentially comes back into the the um, the grassy area. So the the area between 220 and Hearn Avenue is open field basically Mm -hmm. and so so what we're what we're really talking about is about a mile and a half maybe maybe two miles total of that three and a half mile um distance that where people are involved um and so it's really just a question of does it does it loop does it go straight up between allen avenue and um pete harris which would be the the route one area that then cuts across uh, the very top of of the Allendale neighborhood, or does it flare out and go basically all the way around? So it crosses the bayou up there twice. Mm-hmm. It goes once once over across where the near where the scrapyard is, and then it comes back across because it it has to tie into uh, where 220 and and 49 meet right now. And in fact, a lot of the when they put the 220 interchange in there for I-49 North, a lot of that infrastructure is already ready to go for the tie-in so it has to finish up there it's just a question of how it gets there there there's been some concern over the years that our local delegation was not on the same page with regard to this do you think we are now all on the same page the vast majority of our local leaders i think the vast majority are i i I don't know that there's unanimity um in that um you know certainly one of our representatives um you know had some pointed questions uh, during uh, during the the uh, the hearing on Friday but i will say that the at least two of the three that are on the transportation committee uh, appear to be in support of the of it um and i, I know representative Phelps um specifically is very supportive and and wants to see it done the alternative of the loop it which would use the cross lake bridge would really be cost prohibitive, would it not? Well, it's. Not, I mean, so first of all, you have to you have to widen the bridge um, or replace it, and you know, and, and that's our water supply. So that creates a whole host of of environmental and other concerns. But the other piece you have to recognize is that the interchange at forty nine and thirty one thirty two would have to be replaced. That big flyover, that's not that is not built to interstate standards either, and that itself would would be almost to replace that would be almost as costly as the entire, um, you know, Route One or or, or 3A. Mm. So, uh, because you have to you'd have to take down that entire interchange and rebuild it uh, in order to in order to meet uh, interstate standards, and you'd have to wi- widen um, uh, 3132. So you're looking at 14 miles of construction that involves. Uh, you know, getting uh, replacing an interchange and replacing the bridge, mm. and widening 31, 14 miles of thirty one thirty two. So, I mean, it, it. I mean, the 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 cost models are are exponentially more. Gotcha. Well, we'll stay in touch. Mm. Thank you so much, Tim. Right. We appreciate it. Thank you. Mm. Appreciate you. One one seven FM seven ten Keel Mike and McCart. Let's get back to the show with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Kiel. Always makes me a little nervous when I don't know where you're going. (laughs) This time I need you to get your your really, really rugged man card out. Okay. You got it? I, I well I guess. I don't know. You know, you've got a pretty good rugged man card. You do man lots of manly things. Well, yeah. You, you I know? run a chainsaw and yeah. mow my own yard. You can use an axe and chop up wood Heck and yeah. all that stuff. I ground up a stump in my front yard. Heck you got a stump uh, grinder? Uh, 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 you do a lot of manly stuff. I did I rented a stump grinder from I'll be darned. I My sometimes I'm impressed. <laughs> I keep telling you there's people you can hire to do that stuff. Yeah. There's a manly thing that happened. I don't think I'll find a woman who will do this. I don't think. I may be wrong. There might be some good old country gals who might do it, but I don't understand it. So I want to ask you, I don't think you've ever done it, but I want to know if you ever would. Pee sitting down? What? No, no, oh, no, okay. no, no, no. Not that. Um, Catfish noodling. If you don't know what catfish noodling I, I is. I do know what it is. Um, st- I have no st- desire to do this. You stick your hand yeah. down in no, a mud hole no. 
un, sight unseen kind of like. You stick your hand down in this mud hole in the water, and you wait for a catfish to bite your hand, and right. then you pull him up. Right. As he's, uh, he's halfway up you. your arm. Yeah. Now, you have a glove on. You know, some manly men don't even put a glove on. Right. But you, but you're putting your hand down in a muddy, dark, muddy water. Hell no. And you're hunting for cat. Why I, do I don't we do this? Be, I don't want to be standing in that water anyway. No kidding. The catfish is probably one of the least um, <laughs> dangerous creatures that's yes. floating around in that water. I would like to know, A, two questions for you, Mr. Man. Why do we do this? Why do men do this? I have no idea. Don't ask me. And... Who was the first guy who thought, I'm going to try sticking my hand in this catfish hole and seeing if I can get me a catfish? I How think drunk it was, was this man? No, I, I don't think it was. that was the intent. I think he dropped his rod and reel, <gasps> jumped down in the water, and was reaching down to try to find the rod and reel. And then a catfish latched onto him, and he, look what I found. <laughs> <laughs> With blood <laughs> dripping from his arm. I yeah. yeah I mean, uh, so... How, how? There's girls that do this too, by the you way. You think there are girls oh, that I've do got it? Picture, yeah, I did a story on this years of. Uh, oh years ago. man! Look it up. There, there's a there's picture of cute girl noodling catfish noodling. Yeah, I just don't, and it's real prevalent here. It's a popular well, thing. Sure. Folks go at, around look, all the, all over these area lakes, and they're catfish noodling. I'll never now, understand you say it. Man card. I no. I say dumbass man card. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, no. You're more on card? Yeah. I don't get it. I just don't understand it, why we're doing it. Because those kind of catfish aren't the ones you want to eat. Those right. are those big, yucky ones. You don't want those. <laughs> I just Maybe don't somebody will shoot us a message on the Shreveport Security Systems message board yeah. explaining the appeal to this. I think it has something to do with tequila is what I think. Re I don't know. Ruben will be back day after tomorrow. Yeah, you got one more. You did good today. Oh, oh, <laughs> I, hate, I hate being over here. You did good. Just 